In the annals of ancient Egypt, there exists a mysterious and scheming figure, a woman whose story resonates with vengeance and power. Her name is Natakris, and she is considered one of the deadliest female pharaohs to ever rule the world of ancient Egypt. Step into it, where legends and stories intertwine, as we embark on a journey to unravel the mystery of Natakris and her macabre revenge plan. Prepare yourself for a compelling story about the will, courage, ambition, and time it takes one woman to secure her rightful place in history. Please hit the like button, share and subscribe to the channel. You'll never miss a video and help us deliver even more great content. Click that like button and sign up today. Natakris, possibly the last ruler of the sixth dynasty of ancient Egypt, is mentioned in writings long considered a reliable source. These works include an important document chronologically from the 3rd century BC. It was written by Manetho, an ancient Egyptian priest, and the famous Greek historian Herodotus, in the histories written in 430 BC in the Lonic dialect of Classical Greek. According to these accounts, Natakris is believed to have been the daughter of Pepi II and Neith, and the sister of Meronra Nemtiasoth II. Such historical evidence sheds light on the potential role of Natakris as a prominent figure in the ancient Egyptian dynasty. She was born during the Old Kingdom period, which lasted from 2686 to 2181 BC. The age of the pyramids, and marked the first prosperous era of civilization, in the Lower Nile Valley. The Old Kingdom was a period of political stability and economic prosperity, with the pharaohs holding absolute power over the land. The Old Kingdom saw advances in art, architecture, and writing. With the creation of hieroglyphs and the construction of massive pyramid complexes, including the famous Pyramids of Giza. The pharaohs of the Old Kingdom were believed to be divine beings and responsible for maintaining Mayat, the cosmic order. Some sources suggest that Natakris, an ancient Egyptian woman, may have held the prestigious title of pharaoh. However, in Egypt's vast history, there were few female rulers, especially during the time of the Ptolemaic dynasty. Most of the women in power assumed the role of regent, guiding their underage sons to rule. A notable exception is Hatshepsut, a respected pharaoh of the 18th dynasty who faced attempts to erase her from history by later kings. However, remnants of her reign persisted, cementing her existence and high position. In contrast, Natakris remains a captivating mystery. Apart from the mentions by Herodotus and Manetho, sources currently provide very little detail about her persona. The veil of mystery surrounding Natakris persists, leaving historians hungry for more clues to unravel her story. A piece from the Turin King List, also known as the Turin Papyrus and the Turin Royal License, piqued our curiosity. Within its weathered confines, an unnamed pharaoh named Netakerti appeared, taking the reins after Nemtiemsof II. A veil of speculation surrounds this discovery, suggesting that Netakerti is none other than the enigmatic Natakris. For further clarity, we turn to the Abydos King List, also known as the Abydos Table, where an intriguing substitution takes place. Nejkara entered the place once occupied by Netakerti. An intriguing observation arises from this substitution. The name Nejkara carries a masculine connotation, casting doubt on the notion that Netakerti and Natakris are one and the same. Natakris' reign, like a compelling narrative, expands its scope through the ages, leading to different interpretations. The chronology of the Turin king list extends from the reign of Ramesses II to the end of the 20th dynasty. On the other hand, the Abydos king list is found on a wall in the mortuary temple of Seti I and is likely created during his reign. Natakris is not mentioned in either of these sources, and the only known Egyptian account of Natakris can be found in Manetho's Egyptshika, also known as the History of Egypt. Manetho, a respected Egyptian historian and priest, lived during the Ptolemaic dynasty around the 3rd century BC. When considering the time frame in which he lived, there is a considerable time gap between Manetho and the ancient Egyptians, who compiled the Turin King List and the Abydos King List. This significant separation casts doubt on the accuracy of Manetho's writings concerning Natakris. In Egyptica, 
Derived from the Armenian version of Eusebius, Manetho wrote of a queen named Natakris, who was renowned as the most noble and beloved woman of her time. He described her as Snow White and suggested that she was the one who built the Third Pyramid. However, historical evidence has firmly established that the Third Pyramid was indeed erected by Menkora, a pharaoh from the Fourth Dynasty. This discrepancy has raised speculation that Manetho may have understood wrong Menkora as Menkora, leading to confusion and inaccuracies in his writings. This speculation further raises the intriguing possibility that Menkora may have been a nickname or throne name used by Natakris. It is supported by symbols such as seashells and depictions of sedges and bees associated with Menkora. Notably, Prenomen being the throne name, Menkora does appear in the Abydos list of kings, although it is thought to follow Netjerkura, which is associated with Natakris. This supports the hypothesis that Menkora may have been an alternate name or title assumed by Natakris. It is worth noting that the information provided by Manetho about Natakris is limited and he does not provide any important additional details about her. Thus, even if we consider Manetho to be a reliable source regarding Natakris, his accounts provide us with little knowledge of her true nature and historical significance. Therefore, our understanding of Natakris is still very limited. Herodotus, the Greek historian known for his colorful stories, offers us the most fascinating story of Natakris. However, it is important to approach his story, like many other stories in his work, with a touch of salt. Herodotus claims that the story was delivered to him by the priests of Egypt. According to Herodotus in the Histories, Natakris shares the same name as a Babylonian queen and sister of King Metasuphus II, Meronra II. He was a ruler of the ancient kingdom who suffered a tragic death at the hands of his subjects. They assert that Natakris seeks revenge for the brutal murder of her brother, who is also her husband. After the Egyptians killed King Metasuphus II, they gave the kingdom to Natakris. Natakris was smiling and waving to accept the throne, while contemplating the death and destruction of her family's enemies. Then, driven by a deep desire to be punished, she devised a cunning plan to take revenge on those responsible. Natakris took the sole rulership of ancient Egypt and hatched a plan. She secretly ordered the construction of a huge underground hall connected to the Nile by a hidden canal. To fulfill her revenge, she cunningly announced an opening ceremony for the room. Then invite the Egyptians known to be the masterminds behind her husband's assassination, among them many, to the event. During the celebratory party, while the perpetrators were engrossed in their meals, Natakris released a stream of water through a secret passage, flooding the room and drowning her treacherous enemy. This is the range of information provided by Herodotus regarding Natakris. Except for the grim detail that she later met her own fate by throwing herself into a room full of ashes, potentially escaping impending punishment. However, it is important to exercise caution when approaching Herodotus' writings. His narratives often blend history and mythology, embellishing events for dramatic effect. Although his storytelling captures our imaginations, it is essential to seek corroborating historical evidence to separate fact from fiction. As a result, the details surrounding Natakris' vengeful reign and her ultimate fate remain elusive and subject to further investigation. In short, the legacy of Natakris, the most dangerous female pharaoh, reverberates through the corridors of history. Make her immortal as a symbol of strength, intelligence and indomitable spirit. She became the inspiration for many literary and artistic works of the time, leaving an indelible mark on world history. Please consider hitting the like button and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for your support and I can't wait to see you in the upcoming videos.